after studying this module you shall be able to know the meaning of advertising know the importance of advertising objectives and factors affecting budget identify the appeals used in the advertisements and understand involvement and cognitive response theories in executing the ads this module is all about advertising everywhere you go you find ads catching your attention can you think of some ads that come first in your mind select the first ad that came to your mind what do you think was the purpose of that ad was it to catch your attention was it to persuade you to buy or was it just informing you about the brand if we were to ask you to make an ad how much money will you spend in making that ad what would you keep as the main message would you choose to advertise on television or on magazines or billboards these and other issues will be discussed in this module this module is basically divided in four parts which we call the four m's of advertising mission money message and media mission is the objective of the ad the purpose for which it is made money is the budget what is the limiting factor in making the ad message is what is it that you want to convey to your audience and media what tools or what media will you choose to convey your message let us start by understanding what is advertising today advertising has become so common place that it surrounds people whether they live in the cities or the rural areas from billboards radio channels television channels print media buses and trains to even elephants advertising has become omnipresent but what exactly is advertising philip kotler defines advertising as any paid form of non personal presentation and promotion of ideas goods or services by an identified sponsor this definition clearly highlights that advertising must not be one to one presentation rather it is a form of communication for the masses additionally the message or presentation must be paid for moreover the paying entity must be clearly identified messages can be identified as advertising only when these conditions stand fulfilled the american marketing association attempts to broaden the scope of advertising by retaining the kotler's basic conditions the american marketing association defines advertising as the placement of announcements and persuasive messages in time or space purchased in any of the mass media by business firms non-profit organizations government agencies and individuals who seek to inform and or persuade members of a particular target market or audience about their products services organizations or ideas a convenient approach to study advertising is to understand its m's that is mission money message and media now we come to the first m of advertising mission mission means objective so we will discuss advertising objectives advertising objectives are very important because they provide direction and they show which way the entire ad is to look like so the entire process of ad making is determined by the objectives what is the kind of message that is to be conveyed that will be determined by the objectives which kind of celebrity will you use that will be determined by the objectives what will be the background what will be the music what will be the color all of that will be determined by the objectives 
Now there are four objectives that most advertisers use to advertise. To inform, to persuade, to remind and to reinforce. What was the first one? To inform, to create awareness of the features of the product, of the benefits and of what the brand stands for. What was the second objective? To persuade. To persuade means to create preference for, to create a liking and conviction for purchase. Some people like a brand but they may not purchase. So if we can persuade them to purchase the brand, this objective is fulfilled. What is the third objective? To remind. Repeat purchase of brands and products is dependent on how you remind them. Daily you are brushing your teeth with a particular brand of toothpaste. You may want to switch to another one. So if you find an ad that reminds you that another brand exists, then you may want to purchase that. The fourth objective was to reinforce. Reinforce means to convince you that the purchase that you made was perfect. Now let's say you purchased an expensive item, a car of 5 lakhs. You want to know I made the right decision. Everyone wants to know they made the right decision. So naturally, if you find an ad which displays the features, which displays happiness of the consumers, that they bought the car and they are happy with it, that will reinforce that the brand you bought was the right choice. Advertising objectives provide the direction and course of the entire process of making an advertisement. The objectives determine the kind of message to be conveyed, the appropriateness of the characters to voice the message, the background and the context of advertisement. An example of an advertising objective for a brand like Complan could be 40% of Compliance sales volume is derived from adult consumption, living in the metro cities, falling in the age bracket of 30 to 45 years. The goal of this advertisement is to increase the brand use and experience by 20% in the three months for this segment. As can be seen, Objectives should be clearly specify the target audience as well as the impact being intended. Objectives should be backed up by market research. Insights uncovered from market surveys or focus groups can tune objectives to truly hit the need gaps of the target consumers. Impactful advertisements are therefore those whose objectives are built on market data. Now looking at the advertising objectives. Advertising objectives can be classified into informative, persuasive, reminder and reinforcement objectives. Informative advertising focuses on creating awareness of the features, whereas Persuasive advertising creates preference, liking, and conviction for the purchase. Repeat purchase of brands or products is achieved through reminder advertising, while reinforcement advertising is done to reassure buyers that they have made the right purchase. Let us move our discussion to defining advertising goals for measured advertising results that is DAGMAR. Russell H. Coley proposed the DAGMAR model in 1961. The model focuses on the development of specific advertising goals which enables measurement or monitoring of advertisement effectiveness. These objectives relate to the four levels of consumer understanding from unawareness to awareness, comprehension, conviction and action. Awareness 
to create awareness in the minds of target audience of the brand, product or service. Comprehension to ensure that the target market has a sound comprehension of what the brand stands for, the product features and its benefits. Conviction to develop a strong belief in the brand premise and product so as to ensure willingness to purchase. And lastly, action, that is, target audience buys the product. The objectives that are developed under these four levels should be written, clearly specifying the target audience and the time frame within which they are to be achieved. Good objectives are unambiguous, concrete, measurable, and clearly outline the benchmarks or the degree of change being sought. The given diagram shows how advertising carries consumers from the first level of objective to the last. The target audience zero to target audience three mentioned in the figure are all subcategories of the whole target audience. Advertising stimulates consumers to move from one subcategory to another. The goal of advertising would differ depending on the stage of target audience or the subcategory being considered. The entire advertising campaign can be monitored by knowing how many consumers are lying at what level and filling in the gaps. The given diagram shows how advertising carries consumers from the first level of objective to the last. The target audience zero to target audience three mentioned in the figure are all subcategories of the whole target audience. Advertising stimulates consumers to move from one subcategory to another. The goal of advertising would differ depending on the stage of target audience or the subcategory being considered. The entire advertising campaign can be monitored by knowing how many consumers are lying at what level and filling in the gaps. We now come to the next M of advertising which is money. Money or advertising budget. Advertising involves heavy expenditure. Most advertising budgets run into crores of rupees. So naturally managers have to think carefully as to how they are going to use that. Now those firms that assume that advertising is an expense, they find it difficult to fund long advertising campaigns which run over the years. But those organizations which view advertising as an investment, they spend more money, more willingly and the impact of their campaigns is better. Now, when we analyze the budget, now there are four approaches that we can use to decide how much budget to keep. The percentage method, the sales method, the objective and task method and the competitive parity method. The percentage method basically is keeping aside a fixed percentage every year. For example, I decide 10% of my sales will be kept for advertising every year. So if my sales increase, the same percentage will go to advertising, the amount will increase and so on and so forth over the years. Similarly, sales method, you decide a fixed quantum of the sales. So every year I decide 10 crores that I will take out from my sales for advertising. The comparative parity method is just to look at the competitors and see how much are they spending on advertising. If they are spending a lot, I decide to spend a lot. If they decide to spend less, I spend less. The best approach is the objective and task method. The objective and task method means you decide your advertising objectives. You decide what tasks you want your ads to fulfill and then decide how much budget is required to fulfill that objective. If your objective is to launch a new product and to create awareness, naturally you would like to have more advertising compared to maybe a product which has been existing for the last 10 years and you just want to maintain sales. 
let us move our attention to advertising budget. As the cost of media, especially television, is quite high, advertising budgets assume significant importance in the overall marketing budget. Organizations that view advertising as an investment in the goodwill or branding of the company keep larger budgets. However, firms that view it as an expense under marketing may find difficulty funding year-long advertising campaigns. The top management's perspective of the overall importance of advertising plays a vital role in determining the advertising budget. There are other factors that affect the quantum of budget. The stage in product life cycle plays a crucial role. As can be seen in the case of new products, they need greater advertising to invoke trial and build brand awareness. This is aptly seen with the mobile launches where full front page ads in the newspapers were given in the launch of Moto E and Samsung S5 mobiles. Conversely, products that have matured and are running stable sales need much lesser advertising as their purpose is only to remind the audience or sustain the level of sales. Competitive markets also require increased advertising. Greater market competition and clutter caused by the advertisements tend to squeeze the mind space and attention of the consumers. To break through this noise, repetitive and impactful advertising would be required, thereby raising the budget. Another determinant of budget is existing market share. If market share is low, brands would naturally require more advertising to be heard, remembered, and understood by the non-users. High market share brands have already established the initial objectives of awareness and cognition, and thus they need to advertise just to retain and remind the consumers. Every year, this can be evidenced by the sudden increase in the cold drink advertising of established brands in the beginning of the summer season with happiness like Coca-Cola, fun for Fanta, party for Pepsi based themes to remind consumers of their presence that is reminder advertising. New entrants such as paper boat have to struggle harder to be heard and the audience too takes time to understand what value this brand is offering. This can be seen with all paper boat advertisements detailing the product's unique features in an effort to persuade trial or persuasive advertising. Advertising budgets are also affected by the kind of approaches adopted by the organizations. Approaches vary from the percentage to sales method, that is, if sales increase, so does the budget and vice versa. Affordable method, that is all that is left over after other expenses have been met. Objective and task method, wherein money is released depending on the advertising campaign objectives for the year and the competitive parity method in which they spend as much as the competition. Now we come to the next M which is message. Under message, we will primarily discuss three things. ROI, appeals, and involvement. What is ROI? Relevance, originality, impact. 
we should choose messages which are highly relevant very original and having a memorable impact how do we know whether a message is relevant a message is relevant when it is focused on your target audience what is the target audience what are their likes dislikes preferences lifestyle your message should be clearly tuned according to this ideas that are original that are unique naturally they catch the attention and this is extremely important given that there is so much of clutter today in advertising by impact we mean it should be memorable when i asked you which ad comes to your mind first naturally that ad will come to your mind first which hit you which attracted your attention which was unique and it became memorable so combining these three relevance originality and impact this determines the quality of the message now we come to appeals what is an appeal an appeal is the point of interest or fascination in the ad that will attract viewers motives are often the basis of building these appeals now motives and desires are part of everyone all humans will always have the need for rest for power for success social worth comfort and security so if the message is built on these appeals naturally it will appeal to the target audience that is why it is called an appeal now let's come to involvement the question is how involved is your audience is the audience involved in the facts or is the audience involved in the visuals and the music if the audience wants to see information benefits facts logic rationality then we follow what is called the central path if the audience on the other hand is looking towards colorful messages beautiful scenery catchy music interesting jingles or maybe an attractive celebrity then we call we we follow a peripheral path let us move our attention to different components of advertising message the first is idea generation and roi in the face of advertising clutter messages today need to be crafted from creative ideas that gain audience attention and interest an idea is a new combination of thoughts that come from relating previously unrelated concepts together ideas can be generated using various brainstorming techniques however only those ideas should be selected that have high roi potential that is relevance originality and impact unique ideas that are relevant or are placed in the audience context original and have memorable impact are the foundation stone of creative messages the second component is appeals motives and desires are part of human nature humans will always have the need for rest security power success social worth and comfort apart from the basic instincts like hunger fear touch smell of the senses these motives and senses are often the basis of developing appeals in advertising an appeal is the point of interest or fascination in the ad that will attract the viewers The key to any successful ad is the selection of an appropriate appeal which should have the ability to allure the consumers and influence them to address their needs through the brand or the product. Most appeals can be grouped under rational appeals and emotional appeals. The rational appeals refers to the what part of the message relying heavily on information and logic the emotional appeals constituent the how part of the brand expresses itself the rational appeals 
supply information and benefits to address the self-interest of the consumers. Facts, features and logical persuasion is employed with description of the quality, durability, value, convenience or performance benefits. The Nissan Micra ad describes the benefits and features of the push button and mileage. Ads such as the one above are feature appeal ads. Other rational appeal ads are favorable price appeal ads such as the ads announcing discounts and sales, competitive advantage appeal ads which directly or indirectly compare the competition, news appeal ads wherein announcement or news item dominates the ad, product popularity appeal ads and high quality or performance or purity appeal ads. On the other hand, emotional appeal ads relate to the psychological and social needs of the consumers. These can be positive emotions such as feelings of care, love and joy as we can see in case of Cadbury appeal ads with the punchline Kuch Meetha Ho Jai. There can be negative emotion appeal ads also such as guilt or shame based ads to stop people from doing things or getting people do things such as ensure themselves. This can be seen in case of LIC life insurance ad with the punchline Zindagi ke saath bhi, Zindagi ke baad bhi. Humor is also a powerful emotional appeal used in the advertisements. One classic example of this is Mentos ad with the punchline Dimaag ki Bati Jala De. Consumers show high recall on humor ads as they laugh and remember the ads. Many advertisements today employ a combination of both rational and emotional appeals. The third component of advertising message is involvement theory. Involvement theory is based on the elaboration likelihood model ELM that portrays two paths to touch the audience's mind, a central path and a peripheral path. The central route relies on the main message and content of the ad to persuade the viewers. This route is useful for a high involvement audience. The message and content details are noticed by the ad viewers as they are highly involved in the brand or product category. For instance, products with technology focused purchase such as mobiles tend to have customers comparing the product specification in detail. These high involvement consumers process all the information in the ad and also notice the differences between the ads. In direct contrast is the peripheral path. The peripheral route attracts low involvement customers by laying emphasis on the cues rather than the central message. Cues such as the colorful appeal of the ad the scenic background, the catchy music, and an attractive celebrity plays a role in creating a brand association. For instance, soft drink and potato chips brands would prefer peripheral route as there is no cognitive or technical information to be conveyed for these products. A brief analysis of the low involvement route ads would reveal a focus on jingles like the Airtel's jingle Jo Mera Hai Wo Tera Hai was an instant hit or celebrity appeal. Rithik Roshan dancing in the hide and seek biscuits ad, Katrina Kaif in the slice ads, 
Amir Khan has been seen developing movies on innovative themes, resulting in Samsung roping him for a series of successful ads, showing him breaking boundaries and saying, I break new grounds, touch the next emotion. Coca-Cola used Sachin Tendulkar as its happiness ambassador in India, as through him, Indians celebrate the happiness they derive from the cricket. However, it may be emphasized that there should be a strong fit between the celebrity being used and the brand personality. Otherwise, the audiences tend to forget the brand for which the celebrity is advertised and remember only the celebrity. The fourth and the last component of advertising message is the cognitive response theory. Cognitive response theory focuses on rationalizing of ads by the viewers. Cognition relates to thinking and the use of rational appeals is the focus of this model. Thus, cognition focus ads use reasoning and arguments to influence the thought process of the consumers. Cognitive advertisements generally build in persuasive arguments, functional reasons, and information on the attributes of the product. The ads may use one-sided arguments or two-way arguments to build a strong case for the purchase. One-sided arguments uses praise and highlights only the best aspects of the brand or the product. These work well when the audience is already predisposed towards the brand or the message fits into their current belief system. When the audience does not support the belief, such one-sided arguments are likely to provoke strong counter-arguments in the minds of the viewers. For instance, if consumers are of a general attitude that the creams cannot affect the skin color permanently, the Pond's Age Miracle advertisements would generate strong arguments against the claims of the cream and repetition of such ads would alienate the brand from the consumers. The one-sided arguments are therefore used to make straight undistributable claims such as the Amul ad with the headline Eat Milk with Every Meal. The ad claims real milk in its ice creams which for mothers is a cognitive appeal towards the health of the child. As the mothers are concerned that the children eat milk-based ice cream compared to the jelly-based or lollies. In two-sided arguments based ads, the positive benefits are emphasized while acknowledging the weaknesses. This helps in desensitizing of likely counter-arguments that will arise in the minds of the consumers. It also facilitates the building of a favorable positioning compared to competitive offering. For instance, the Hindu ad with the line, because the government malfunctions better more than the wardrobe malfunctions, emphasizes that the news reports in Hindu will focus on political serious matters rather than entertainment and celebrity based stories. This is in line with the Hindu positioning that it is an analytical newspaper for thinkers and that is why it keeps ahead of the times. Another section of cognitive ads focus on comparative advertising. Non-comparative ads are those that mention the brand, its image and attributes. No competitors are mentioned or implied. Comparative ads directly or indirectly compare the product 
with the competitors to advertise the advantages. Hindustan Unilever advertised the new Pepsodent is 102% better than the leading toothpaste with the visual indicating Colgate leaves germs. Sometimes comparative advertisements directly name or defame the competitors as in the case of Rin vs. Tide advertisement. Tide se kahi behtar safedi de Rin which was stayed by the Calcutta High Court in March 2010. Other interesting examples include billboard advertisements. Media management. Media management involves choosing media to place the advertising messages. This choice is determined by the level of ad reputation and exposure required to impact the target audience in the given period of time. You have now completed the four M's of advertising. This completes your knowledge about advertising. Now, apart from advertising, corporates also use PR and sales promotion. PR. PR stands for public relations. Public relations basically means building relations with the public at large. The public is anybody who comes in touch with the organization. It could be stakeholders, clients, investors, employees, or even villagers neighboring to your factory. So creating a relationship with all of these people. Now the primary tools that are used in public relations are press conferences, news releases, sponsoring of events, lobbying and even counseling of employees. Sales promotion. Sales promotion is basically a short term incentive to stimulate sales. A brief incentive to boost sales. Many times you go to malls, you go to shops, you find sale written in large words and you have a 50% discount or a 30% discount for two weeks or three weeks. Please remember that it has to be for the short term. If it runs over months and months and months, your brand gets damaged. Sales promotion can take the form of discounts, free samples, lotteries, quizzes, or clubbing of products together, one for one free, buy two, get one free, and so on, so forth. Another component of advertising management is public relations. Public relations or PR as the name suggests, is the building of relations with the public. It is the effort by the organization to create a favorable opinion, attitude or perception in the minds of the public. By public, it is meant all the people that come in the contact with the organization. They may be stakeholders, clients, investors, employees or even the villagers living in the factory neighborhood. The aim of the PR is to create a positive public mindset, neutralize the hostile opinions and manage public perception in times of crisis. The primary tools of PR are press conferences, news releases, sponsoring of events, lobbying, and employee counseling. The last component is sales promotion. Sales promotion refers to the incentives used to stimulate sales in the short run. Incentives may be in the form of discounts, coupons, rebates, free samples, or other schemes that persuade the consumers to buy the products immediately. Sales promotions should be run for short periods as the brand image is otherwise affected adversely. The goal of advertising is to create a brand image, positioning or awareness, whereas sales promotion is used to boost the sales for the short run. Let us summarize 
what we have learned in this module. Advertising management involves specification of objectives, determining a budget, designing a message, and media management. Objectives should be unambiguous, measurable, and focus on the target audience. Advertisements can have informative, persuasive, reminder, or reinforcement objectives. The budget can depend upon the product life cycle, competition, and organizational objectives. The message design involves generating ideas, having high relevance, originality, and impact. Appeals, consumer involvement, and arguments are used to make message execution effective.